Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a physics conveyor. Let's get started. So you first want to empty the 3D world or clear it of all components. Then go to the Modeling tab. And let's go and create a new component. So in the Component group, I'll click New. Let's now rename the new component. So in the Component Properties panel, I'll type Physics Conveyor. Let's now add some geometry. I'll go to the Geometry group, click the Feature Zero, and click Box to create a block feature. Let's now edit the dimensions of the block, so let's set its length to be 1500, its width to be 400, and its height to be 700. And let's go ahead and change where this block is located in the components, so probably at this midpoint of the block here. So I'll go to the y-axis, and I'm going to take away 200, so minus 200. So I just half the width of the conveyor. So now everything's centered along this line here at the 3D World's origin. Let's also change the material of the block. So in the Feature Properties panel, I'll set Material. Let's use a metal material. And now let's add a collider to this block. So I'll expand the Physics section and set its collider to be Box. And this does add a Physics Entity behavior to the Components node. So let's go to the Component Graph panel and expand the Root node. Expand its behaviors. And there's that Physics Entity behavior. And since we're working with a Physics Path, going to set the physics type to be in kinematics. So go to your properties panel and choose this option here. Let's now add the frames for our physics path. So we probably want to start the path at this midpoint here, have a center point and some endpoint over here at this midpoint of this edge. So go to the geometry group, click the feature zero, then click frame. And there's the frame, but I can't see the label. So go to the 3D world toolbar, click the frame type zero and select the frames checkbox. So there's the label. And the move tool is on, so I'll use the origin of the frame and just snap it to that location there. And I want to make sure the orientation of the frame is good, so we can see these mini coordinate axes show the object coordinate system or the frame's coordinate system. So the x is pointing that direction, that's good, and the z is pointing up. Let's now add two more frames. So let's go back to the geometry group, add another frame, and let's just drag it to the center point of this face here. That orientation looks good too. Let's add another frame feature, and there it is. So let's drag it all the way over here, and just check its orientation. That looks fine. Now let's add our physics path. I'll go to the behavior group, click the behavior zero, and under physics, we're concerned with this behavior here called path. Let's now add these frames as the waypoints of our path. So in the properties panel, I'll click the expand button for path, followed by the plus sign. And you want to add the frames in order, so this first frame is the start of the path, this is the midpoint, and this last frame is the end of the path. So let's close that out. Let's now add the interfaces so we can plug our conveyor into other components. So we want an interface at the start of the path, and probably one at the end of the path. Let's go to the behavior group, click the behaviors arrow, and I'm going to add a one-to-one -one interface. Let's now go to the properties panel and add a new section or a plug. And we're going to locate that first interface or plug at that frame at the start of the path. And we're transferring components into the path, so this is going to be a flow field. And the container is going to be our physics path. And it's going to be at the input or the start of the path, that input port. So now add another interface for the end of the path over here. We'll go to the behavior group, click the behavior zero. Add another one-to-one -one interface. And then in the properties panel, I'll add a new section or plug. The location of this section is going to be at the end of the path, so frame underscore two. We're transferring components, so we're adding the flow field. The container is still the physics path, and this time the port name is the output, so we're transferring components out of the path. So now we have our component. Let's go and save our work. I'll go to the component graph panel, select the root node of the component, go to the component group here, and click save. And all this metadata here looks fine, so I'll just click Save down at the bottom of the Save Component task pane. And you can save the component in your My Models folder, that's what I'm doing. And now let's go to the Home tab. And I'm going to go to my eCatalog panel and click my My Models source here, just to double check that, yep, there's that new physics conveyor I just modeled. So if I now select it as a component, you can see there's those interfaces I set up, so at the beginning and the end of the physics path. Let's now test our conveyor. I'll go to the eCatalog panel, and under Models by Type, I'm going to Expand Feeders and click Visual Components. 
And if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you can see we have a shape figure that's set up for creating physics parts or components that are physical bodies that can't be affected by the physics in the 3D world. So let's add this item to our layout. So I'll drag it in. The PMP command is active, so when I drag the feeder close to the start of my conveyor, I get the green arrow, that's good, that means I can connect the feeder to the conveyor at that point, and they connect to each other, great. Now let's run the simulation, and we can see that the create cylinders, and they are transferred to our conveyor path, so that's good, and they should probably fall off the end, and they do, there we go, great. Let's see, let's see if we can get a stack, oh boy! Oh, it looks like three is enough. Let's go ahead and reset the simulation. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to set up a pushing force in your conveyor path. Now, a pushing force is just concerned with pushing parts along a path. So your path is still defined by these frame features, but now you're using geometry to push the objects on the path in a certain way. So you can use inclines and declines or just a straight line, for example, a conveyor belt. Now, a pushing force is not the same as a diverter or turn unit that's created using other geometries. So with a pushing force, you're just concerned with pushing the parts along that predefined path, whereas with a diverter or turn unit, you're kind of altering the motion of the objects on the path. For example, you may want to index parts, divert them in a different direction, or change their orientation. Let's now add a pushing feature or force to our conveyor. So I'll select a component in the 3D world. I'll then go to the modeling tab. And let's create a ramp along the physics path, so components can go up a ramp and down a ramp, and then just continue on. I'll go to the geometry group, click the features arrow, and under primitive geometry, I'm going to create a wedge. I'll then use the move tool and drag the wedge to the top face of my conveyor. And let's now edit the dimensions of this wedge. So go to the feature properties panel, and let's set the bigger length to be 200. So it's going to be that bottom length there, you can see. For a smaller length, we can keep that as 50, that's fine. For bigger height, that's fine. Smaller length, that needs to be 0. So notice now we have that 0 point there, so components can go up the ramp. For width, let's make that 100. So what we did is we just made the wedge a bit wider in this direction. And we want to see the back of the wedge as well, so mirror it this way. I'll go to the Feature Properties panel and select the Mirror Back checkbox there. Let's now add a collider. So I'll expand the physics section here and give it a precise collider. Let's now center our wedge with the midpoint or the center line of our path. So let's first reset the x coordinate to be 0. So now we're at the start of our path. And let's use the y axis arrow here and these tick marks to kind of increment the value. So right about there looks fine. That's 50. Let's actually see if that's centered up, so I will move the wedge just a bit. And yeah, we went too far. So let's go back to negative 50, and that looks good. Let's now reposition our wedge along the conveyor. So let's actually move it right about here is fine. So we should see the cylinders come into the path, go up, and then go down. So let's now go to our path. I'll go to the component graph panel and select the physics path behavior here. And now notice in the properties panel we have this property called pushing features. Now I'm going to show you how this works without adding any geometry as a pushing feature. So I just have this block and this wedge in the current node that's a physics entity. And it has a physics path, so if I run the simulation, you can see everything is still working out. And this is trial and error, so we probably need to make this top, uh, this big length here, or the small length, a bit longer so the cylinders just don't drop down. But you can see that right now the physics path is just using the geometry that's in its same feature tree in the node, and everything is still kind of working. The components are being pushed along the path, and they fall at the back here. So let's reset and select our wedge. And we want to make that length, that top length, bigger. So for a smaller length, let's make that to be 100. And that still is not to my satisfaction, so let's set the bigger length to be 300. So that looks about right. Let's run the simulation again. And there we go. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So even though we did not add this block or this wedge as a pushing feature, you know, the physics path is still recognizing that it's geometry on the path and it's pushing the cylinders along it. So what we can do is we can select the component again, select the physics path, and then in the properties panel, I'll expand the 
pushing features button here, click the plus sign, and notice I can add more than one feature in this node as a pushing feature or pushing force. So we want to use the wedge, and we also want to use the block, but I want to show you what happens if you don't use the block as a pushing feature. So right now the physics path just knows to use the wedge which is offset from the beginning of the path. So if we press start, actually I need to close this out. And see that, you know, the cylinders are just not being pushed to the wedge. They're kind of falling off at the start of the path because they're not being pushed onto it. So to fix that, let's reset. And now add our block as a pushing force or pushing feature. Run the simulation again. And yes, there we go. So it's working the same whether you added the features or not, but when you add one feature as a pushing feature or pushing force, you want to make sure that the rest of the path is also covered. Now I also want to show you before I end the video how um, the parent and uh, child hierarchy works with pushing features. So let's actually reset. And with this wedge, instead of changing the smaller length, which I did earlier, let's actually select the wedge again and set the smaller length back to 50. And now let's use an operation feature to extrude this wedge along the x-axis. So go to the geometry group, click the features arrow, and under generate I'm going to click extrude. So this is an operation type feature that can, you know, extrude sub features. So let's now go to our component graph panel, and in the node feature tree I'm going to select the wedge and drag it on top of the extrude. So now this wedge is a child feature of this extrude so its operation is being applied to the wedge and you can see in the 3D world the extrusion is going in the Z direction so it, it extruded the geometry of the wedge up so we don't want that. Let's go to the feature properties panel and for the direction of extrusion it has a 1 for the Z axis so let's set that to be 0. So now no extrusion is happening. Let's now set the X coordinate to be 1 so now the extrusion is going in the X axis direction and for the length right now it's 100 so that's fine but since we're extruding the wedge, we also need to add a collider to this extrude feature. So I'll set the physics collider to be precise. And now, if I was to run the simulation, let's see what happens. Nothing happens. So notice the cylinders can't go on to the wedge, and even when they do, they're not being pushed anymore. That's because the extrude feature is the parent of our wedge, and since we didn't add it as a pushing feature, you know, nothing's being pushed right now. So to fix this, let's reset, go back to our physics path, and now if we expand the pushing features and click the plus sign and add our extrude feature, let's see what happens. There we go. So it works just as before. But don't get confused about this. So what I can do is I can reset the simulation and I can remove the wedge as a pushing feature because this extrude feature has other child features, so those features will also be used as a pushing force. So if I run the simulation again, we can see it still works out for us. Now another thing to notice is that since the extrude has its own collider, its sub-features don't need to have a collider anymore if you don't want them to. So I can reset the simulation again, go to the node feature tree in the component graph panel, select the extrude feature, actually I need to select the wedge, sorry. Let's go to its feature properties panel, and let's take away its collider so it won't have any collider. So it's just using the precise collider for the extrude feature, its parent. So if we run the simulation again, everything still works out. Now this can be a bit confusing and kind of hard to learn initially, so I'm going to end the video right here, but in the later videos I'm going to show you how to use uh, diverters, turn units, and some clamps to kind of change the orientation of components when they move along the path. But we'll do that in a later video. So. If you have any more questions, you can go to our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.